Hi there and welcome back to how to use ANA2. In this video we're going to take a look at ANA2's polyphonic step arpeggiator. This is one of the coolest features I think on ANA2. Um, so basically we've got um, a combination between a step sequencer and an arpeggiator. The step sequencer part is that you have control over where you want to put your notes and the arpeggiator side is that instead of it being fixed notes, we have these sort of note buckets that fill up when you play notes. So you can actually put any notes into these buckets, six at a time, and then the corresponding notes will play. So I'll give you a quick example. So I'll set this up to 16 so you can see. So there we have um, six note chord and the notes are corresponding, these steps are corresponding to those notes. So this gives you loads of control over um, creating your own patterns um, and those patterns will move with your chord. So it's very cool. Um, so I'll give you another example. I'm going to put hold on just so I don't have to keep holding down the notes. So that's just me playing a, a bit of a sequence there of chords. Um, and I've actually got some chords pre-recorded in here and, and I'll play through those and you can sort of see what's going on while we're editing the notes. So because it's polyphonic what we can actually do is just put in some chords. I'll just clear this. I can take hold off now that we've recorded MIDI. So we can put a mixture of polyphonic chords and single notes. And we can see the chords that are playing. So gives you loads of versatility there. And we've also got higher octaves and lower octaves that we can also input notes in. So for example, I can go up to the higher octave, put a, another ARP on top. And likewise, we can go down to a lower octave, create some sort of crazy bass line. bit low to hear it. So there you go, you've got a whole range of three octaves to play with, um, plus whatever chords you've actually input in the first place. So you can span quite a, a breadth of the keyboard and get some really crazy stuff going on. So let's look at some of the other features. And um, we've got three tabs down here which controls the modulation. We've mod one and mod two, which are sort of bar graphs. And these can be freely assigned to any of the modulation parameters. I'll quickly fire down a filter so you can see. <laughs> And they can be applied to anything effects or any of the modulation targets that we have here. And we have two of those with independent um, 
amount controls here. And then we have our velocity. So if you have, for example, filter assigned to velocity, these will now control the filter. <laughs> So again, you have loads of control there to mess with. And you can obviously go into your modulation matrix as well and assign velocity to anything you want as well. So that just gives you even more control. And the mod matrix, you can see the, the two um, ARP modulation parameters and the velocity there. So you can hook up as many of those as you like. Um, so let's look at this section here. We've obviously got some presets, you can play through those. And of course, save your own presets. We've got our step um, amount here, so we can choose how many steps are going to be in the sequence. And we've got 64 steps in total that you can play with. And it's very easy to just copy and then paste your steps to any of the other sequences. And then you can decide how much of that is going to be played using your step amount. We've got our step rate. Go all the way up to to it T and then we have note order so I'll go back to a default default setting okay we're back to our up down. Um, and I'll show you how note wrap, wrap works. So we can either um, set our note order to low high. So when we play chords, the low note will be on note one and the highest note will be on note six. Or we can set it the opposite way where our highest note will be on note one and our lowest note will be on note six. And we can also do a thing called note wrap. Um, first I'll show you on this. If I hold down just one note, it's gonna cycle through and just wait for that note to come up and play it. Now that, that's cool if you have something very specifically played in. But if you want to utilize all the steps, you can go to a mode called note wrap. And what it'll do now is if it only detects two or one note, it'll duplicate that one note across all six notes. So I'm just holding down one note there and it's basically assigning it to all notes. If I hold down two notes, it'll assign note one and two to one and two. It'll assign note one and two to three and four and then five and six. If I hold down three notes, it's taking those notes one, two and three and assigning them to four, five, and six. So you can get this um, thing where you, it'll fill the ARP up basically. So you don't need to worry about playing all six notes at the same time. And then we have octave wrap. So what octave wrap will do, it's very similar to note wrap, but instead of it just copying, um, say note one to note two, it'll act actually change the octave as well. So it'll go up. That's cool, you can get some nice um, big epic arps doing that. We've also got a gate function and a swing function. So. Uh, 
And then we have our buttons here. So we've got our sync mode, which hooks it up to the DAWs tempo and um, timeline. We have hold, which means you can just press a note and let go and it'll still can keep playing. We have retrig. So usually when sync is on, um, the DAW timeline will um, specify where this um, marker is and what notes being played at what particular time. With retrig on, it just starts whenever you press the note. It's still synced up to the DAW, but it just waits for you know each sixteenth to happen. And it'll just re-trigger the ARP. If you have sync off and you set your BPM, it'll actually just continuously play. It doesn't sync up to anything to, except for the BPM. So most of the time you'll probably have sync on and maybe even retrig depending on what type of ARP you're using. So I think that's it really for most of the features. Um, just this last one, you can turn preset lock on and when you um, go to the different presets, It'll keep your ARP settings as they were. So that's a handy feature if you want to browse through the presets, but you want to keep the ARP where it is. In the next video, we're going to take a look at CMD. And then after that, we'll look at CMD and the ARP combined, because that's where it really starts to get super powerful. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.